Hey guys, it's Sean O'Connell, the Managing Director here at Cinema Blend, and we are looking ahead to the Toronto International Film Festival, a fest that Cinema Blend covers every single year because of the exciting titles that come out of it. We're going to run through a breakdown of the movies we cannot wait to see come September. But before we dive into those titles, do me a favor and go down and hit subscribe, then turn on your notifications, because every time we post a video like this here on Cinema Blend's YouTube page, we want you guys to be the first ones to come watch it. I am starting with Joe. Joker, because the fact that Todd Phillips's Joker movie is going to be first at Venice, where it's going to have its world premiere, and then is going to travel to Toronto, means that Warner Brothers thinks they have an awards contender on their hand and not just another superhero comic book adaptation. Obviously, the moment that Todd Phillips cast Joaquin Phoenix as his Joker signified to the audience that he's going for something deeper and more meaningful than your normal superhero fare. So we are super excited to see what type of dramatic, villainous portrayal of the classic DC villain that we're going to see on screen in this upcoming film. We love director James Mangold. He's an incredible storyteller. Part of the reason why we love James Mangold so much is just because of his previous films. He's coming off of Logan, the outstanding Wolverine film with Hugh Jackman, but he also did the Johnny Cash biopic Walk the Line that had Joaquin Phoenix and Reese Witherspoon uh, both getting Oscar attention for their portrayals. And his new film, Ford vs. Ferrari, looks like the type of film that you can bring your dad to and everybody can appreciate it. Um, it is set in the past and it tells about the storied rival between two classic uh, automakers, Ford and Ferrari, and they are played by Oscar heavy hitters Matt Damon and Christian Bale. Now, if you tell me that Matt Damon and Christian Bale are in a new James Mangold movie, I'm showing up regardless. But the first trailer for this film looks riveting. It looks like Mangold has figured out a way to put his camera directly into the racing cars that will be taking you through this rivalry. I love that this one's going to be a tiff because it means that they have a lot of confidence in how it might do during the Oscar season. Every Oscar season we are treated to some type of historical biopic and this one looks extremely special this year. Harriet is going to star Cynthia Erivo, who we know from Widows and Bad Times at the El Royale, playing Harriet Tubman. Uh, these films can be very uh, special, they can be very educational, and they can also be very emotional. And based on the types of performances that Erivo has given us in previous films, I think that Harriet has the potential to reach all three of those checks. I'm going to pick out Hustlers as a film that we're looking forward to, but I want to sort of couch it uh, from this reason. Yes, it stars Jennifer Lopez, and yes, it is centered on a famous strip club in New York City called Scores. But if um, you know the story of what happens in Hustlers, it is actually a long con thriller about about the women dancing at the strip club who decide to pull off a major heist of their high profile clientele. Hustlers is actually based on a true story and there is a New York Magazine article that you can dig up to read about this heist that the dancers at Scores pulled off. So there's a big reason why we want to see this played out on the big screen because there's some real life tension that's fueling the narrative drama. There's a title on the TIFF lineup that we are really excited to check out and it's called Jojo Rabbit. And it's exciting for a number of reasons First, it's the new film from Taika Waititi. Now, Taika is a brilliant comedian who brings a unique voice to almost anything that he does. Mainstream audiences will largely know him for the way that he reinvented Thor in the most recent Thor Ragnarok. In Jojo Rabbit, Taika Waititi is going to attempt to play Adolf Hitler. And that might scare some people, but Taika has an approach to comedy similar to Sacha Baron Cohen in that he's constantly trying to turn everything on its head and poke fun of the taboo. So there's a new trailer out where you can actually see Taika as Adolf Hitler. Uh, Hitler's going to be an imaginary character in the mind of a young character played in Jojo Rabbit. I have no idea where Jojo Rabbit is going to go, but I can guarantee you that I'll be sitting in my seat on opening night waiting to see what type of ride Watiti brings us on this year. We're singling out another biopic in the form of Judy, where Renee Zellweger is going to play the legendary screen actress Judy Garland. Judy is going to take the approach of other biopics that we've recently seen where they catch up with a Hollywood icon later in their career. In this one, it's years after Judy Garland made her debut um, on the silver screen, decades after she was in Wizard of Oz. She's arriving in London to perform uh, a stage show and starts to reminisce about her career highlights as she begins a relationship with the man who will eventually become her fifth husband. This could be a showcase role for Renee Zellweger and push her into the Best Actress competition. I think it's great 
great that she's seeing a bit of a rejuvenation in her career, and Judy Garland might be just the type of role to remind people what a powerful actress Renee Zellweger can be. We're going to conclude our preview of Toronto with a highly anticipated thriller that basically shows that you don't have to be an Oscar contender to go to a film festival like this in the fall. Ryan Johnson leaves Star Wars behind briefly to dive into the whodunit murder mystery Knives Out, and the cast for this one is just spectacular. Chris Evans, Daniel Craig, Michael Shannon, Jamie Lee Curtis, Don Johnson, and Tony Collette. It sounds like it's going to be an Agatha Christie type uh, Ten Little Indians film with everybody sort of figuring out that there's a dead body and who might be responsible for it and Daniel Craig is actually playing a southern private detective and that alone is going to get me in but I love when Ryan Johnson branches away from his blockbusters to make movies like Brick or The Brothers Bloom and hopefully this is a return to that type of form I also love that Knives Out is going the film festival route it's not going to open till November it feels like it could just become a crowd pleaser but going to a film festival will help generate some early buzz and we're going to definitely check it out when we're there in Toronto. Believe me guys when I tell you this is just the tip of the iceberg of the amazing titles that are going to be in Toronto at the 2019 Film Festival. We didn't even get a chance to touch on The Goldfinch or Just Mercy. Uh, we're looking forward to the new Steven Soderbergh film The Laundromat and we're hearing amazing things about The Lighthouse. Of course when we go to Toronto we really want to be surprised by titles that we hadn't heard anything about that we sort of stumble in to check out and then they end up blowing us away. So we're going to have plenty of coverage from Toronto come September, you're going to want to be here for all of our updates. To make sure that you keep up to date with everything that we're learning in Toronto, go down and hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, because whenever we post a video like this, whether it's from Toronto or just on entertainment news in general, you guys are going to be the first ones to hear about it.